training material and the training recording at the end of the session. So I would like each and every one of you to take a minute to leave your details in the message section. You said I sent a shop name and your email address. Just take one minute to do this. Okay, so as you continue doing that, uh, I'm assuming uh, most of you have. Uh, like I said, to, uh, the purpose of the session today is uh, to educate you on how to use Seller Center. So we'll be covering the following modules, rather, uh, getting started, product creation management, order management and processes, finance, seller score, and some of the value added services we have for you as a seller. And lastly, I will be touching on the official communication channels we have for you as vendors as well okay so we'll start with the getting started of course maybe just to bring an introduction to who is jumia and what we deal with uh jumia is currently the number one e-commerce platform i am assuming everyone already knows that and at the moment um we have uh, established um uh we have established a, a customer base across Ken, uh, the country where we can comfortably say a uh, majority of Kenyans have heard of Jumia, right? Now, the, the, the next subject or rather the next objective for us is ma making these people use our platform. So currently, as of last year, 30% of internet users in Kenya have ever shopped on Jumia, and this number keeps growing. So the target this year was 50%. Hopefully, by the end of the year, we'll be able to share this information with our vendors. So... Uh, our customer base keeps growing daily. So does our vendor base, so does our product base. So it's a growing community and it's a growing uh, platform, right? So um, what are some of the benefits of selling on Jumia? Uh, there are many, trust me, there are many. I'm sure each and every one of you has something that you're looking to find on the platform. But then the common benefits that uh, Jumia has to sellers is one, the most popular one is access to a large customer base, like I said. Number two is that it's convenient to deliver your products on our platform. The fact that you're not the one who's going to worry about delivering it to your customer is a benefit because Jumia has established a very big footprint in Kenya where we are able to deliver anywhere in the, in the country. Right. Uh, number three is that it's easier to set up your account. I'm sure there's none of you who has charged anything to set up your account. Please let us know if you are asked to pay anything to set up, set up your account. But it's supposed to be free and it's very fast. Right. Um, then we have 24, shop, uh, 24 hour shop availability. The other benefit of not just selling on Jumia, but when it comes to e-commerce is that your shop is available 24 seven. Okay. 24-7, meaning customers can even shop anytime in the night or early morning. So it's never limited to a particular time period, like when you have a physical shop, right? So this is some of the benefits, right, of selling on the platform. So there are many that you may come across as well, but then those are the key benefits of selling on the platform, right? So a marketplace, 
is what Jumia has. And the simple definition of a marketplace is where buyers and sellers meet or where buying and selling takes place. And that's exactly what Jumia is. It's where buying and selling takes place. And currently, the Jumia marketplace consists of over 8 million products, over 17,000 live vendors. Actually, as of yesterday, it's over 24,000 live vendors um, and an average monthly traffic of 15 million visitors. All right. So this number keeps growing daily. Actually, I'll update this. So as of yesterday, I saw the numbers. We are at 24,000 live vendors. And I'm sure the number of products as well has increased as well. So like I said, it's a growing community. It's a growing platform. And um, the main purpose is to bring together buyers and sellers, right? Now, how the selling on Jumia work? Very straightforward. Uh, that's why we use this diagram. So this is you. You set up your seller center account. The next thing is to upload products on a FAQ upload products on your seller center. Once you've done that, these items are seen by customers on the Jumia shopping page. I want to assume Kilam Topper, you've ever shopped on Jumia, so it's nothing unfamiliar. Okay. So once customers view and buy you, you place an order on your product or your item, you are required to process the order, then you bring it to Jumia. You drop it off at our hub. So once you drop off your order at our hubs, then we as Jumia are done to deliver the order to the customer. Right. So once the customer receives the order, right, they pay. So Jumia is usually the one that collects payment. So once Jumia has collected the payment, then Jumia will pay you as a vendor at the end of the week. Mostly our payments are done on a weekly basis. Right. So that's how the cycle goes. So it will keep repeating itself. Customers view your products on Jumia, they buy, you get notified, you process, you bring it to us, we take it to the customer, customer pays, Jumia collects the payment, then Jumia pays you at the end of the week. Okay, yeah, so that's a simple illustration of how selling on Jumia uh, works. So as you can see, just uh, just to go back on this, um, just to emphasize, you and the customer do not interact. That is actually breach of contract. You are required to always process and drop off your orders at the Jumia drop-off hub. Never deliver the orders yourself to the customer. Never call the customer. Never um, reach out or de uh, deliver anything to the customer yourself. Okay, that can lead to termination of your account and in some cases penalties. So please make sure that you follow our terms and conditions and that involves dropping off your orders at our drop off hubs and making sure that they are processed on time. Okay, so yeah, so that's a brief introduction of, uh, to Jumia and Seller Center. So now let's talk about Seller Center itself because the main part of this training will actually talk about or cover Seller Center and its functions. So this is how Seller Center looks like and I want to assume Kilam to upper a corner Seller Center, okay? So um, just in case there's anyone here who does not have an account yet, very simple, you can find the registration form within the Jumia shopping page. Did you know you can find the link in three places? Um, one place is at the very top. At the top of this banner where you see call our number, there's a link here, sell on Jumia. That's link number one. Link number two is on the right-hand side, sell on Jumia. And then the third and final link is at the very, very bottom. And I make money with Jumia, another link there, sell on Jumia. When you click on these links, they will take you to this page where you just simply click on start selling and it takes you to the registration form. So in case there's anyone here or you happen to know someone who's not yet registered, please make sure that you uh, direct them to the link like I've shown you. Alternatively, remember anything can be found in the internet. Just go to your browser and search how to sell on Jumia. Okay, just uh, how to sell on Jumia, right? When you do that, you'll see this link, Jumia Kenya, right? Sell products on Jumia, make money. Click on that link, turn in Aquileka back to the same page, start selling registration form. Okay, so those are two places you can find the link within the Jumia shopping page and also when you go to your browser and search. Okay. All right. So there are several functions of Seller Center, and they include the five major following other profile functions, content creation and management, order management and processes, finance um, access, uh, and also basic marketing tools. So those are the things we'll be covering for the rest of the class. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions as we move on, please feel free to write it down in the messages or I'll be creating time to uh, take up any questions after every topic as we go, go along. Just a reminder, in, uh, in case anyone has still not left their details, please make sure that you leave left your details, your seller center shop name and your email address if you still haven't. Okay, so... Let's talk about Seller Center. So this is how Seller Center looks like. Just uh, let's take a simple tour. So 
Solar Center has many activities, many links, many colors going on, but what are they for? At the very top, we have News of the Day. That's where we communicate any urgent updates. So always pay attention to what is being communicated on News of the Day, okay? Then below that, we have these links and buttons. We'll be talking about some of them as we go on, but uh, just know they, are, they fall under two categories. Either the link will take you to a service or the link will take you to information, okay? Then uh, below that, we have the menu. So the seller center menu is easy. This is where most of your activity or most of your activities will be taking place. We have coach, products, orders, promotions, reports, and finally, the settings menu, okay? Then this banner, as you see, go by at promotions. I, I'm sure you've heard of Jumia promotions before, the most popular one being Black Friday. Actually, you're lucky you've joined Jumia right on time as we are preparing for Black Friday. So if you happen to have already set up your account and you're already past 30 days old, you are uh, eligible to join a promotion, right? So these are promotions that are coming up. So as you can see, they are Black Friday promotions. So if you want, you can go ahead and join and give your customers a discount, okay? Then at the bottom of that, we have this dashboard. And basically their purpose is to show you activities of your account. Uh, for example, on the left, uh, this show, shows you the number of pending orders that you have. In case you have any order and you have process bundle and the finishing how many of them you've not yet processed. Within the same dashboard, you'll also notice there's something called current daily order limit. So um, during in the first email, amongst the first emails you got, if you didn't notice, you are usually notified of, um, your order limit, okay? Maybe some of you have read it, some of you, most of the people actually fail to read this, you know? So basically, it, uh, an order limit is where you are locked on the number of orders you can get in one day, or you're limited on the number of orders you can get in a day. Why? Because a lot of cases we find that a new vendor, I'm enjoying Jumia, I feel confused. Most of the time, most of the vendors are confused because you're still trying to make your way to the website. Uh, the vendors not yet attended training, so at a dream, so when a part of the vendors go in MIA or they have ignored the order, this order ends up getting canceled because orders cannot stay for more than a day, okay? So you find that there have been a lot of cases where orders are canceled from new vendors' accounts because of lack of knowledge and how to process orders. So to, and then something that vendor, new vendors fail to understand is these are not dummy orders. These are actually real live orders from real customers. So it affects our customer experience, right? So what we do is, um, we put limitations on vendors' accounts. So you find that all new vendors will come the limit year one, okay? Your order limit will be increased to five. After we've attended this training, I'll be sending you an, an, a test on email later on in the day. You just do the test. It's a very simple 10-minute uh, test. It has multiple choices. Then your order limit will be increased to five, okay? Then once you've completed your 30 days, you will no longer have an order limit because now we assume you are uh, uh, you've learned your ways, or rather you've learned and understood how to operate your seller center account. So currently, all of you have another limit of one, and then after your one month is over or your first 30 days are over, you'll see your order limit will be at 10,000. Now, next to that, we have your rating. This shows you your operational score, okay? So as you move on, we'll talk about this later on, where we'll dive deeper into every vendor. What is your seller score? How the, what part does it play? Uh, for you as a vendor on Jumia. Then we have best-selling products. Best-selling products shows you the percentage of products that are being bought more often than others. As a business person, maybe some of you may call Maduka, some of you maybe haven't. You realize that more often than others, and that's what we call your best sellers. So the good thing about seller Scent is that it actually even shows you. It tells you <laughs> this percentage of your products are your best sellers, right? They're being bought more often and frequent than the rest. Then um, we have new product creation in the last 14 days. So this one shows you how many new products have you created in the last 14 days of your account. So we'll dive deep into that. Why does Seller Center keep tabs on me creating products? Because one of the success um, uh, tips that you, you, you need to understand as a vendor is, if you want to increase your chances of selling, you need to have a wide range of products. So of course, you need to be adding as many products on your Seller Center account as you go on. So we'll dive deep into that as well. Then lastly, announcements and sales graph are found at the bottom. So that's how Seller Center looks like when you log in, right? Very straightforward. So we'll be mostly uh, touching base on the menus as we are during the session. And I'll actually also be touching base on some of the links we have up here as well, okay? Now, the first function of Seller Center is the profile function, right? That I want to dive deeper into, and that leads us to the settings menu. 
so let's go to the settings menu. It has two functions, your profile, manage users. Let's start with your profile. Okay, so come to settings. Number one, seller ID. Every vendor on Jumia has a seller ID. As soon as your seller center account was created, it auto-generated a seller ID, and this is it. So if you'll ever come across someone at the hub asking you for a seller ID, please do not confuse this with your national ID card. They actually mean you share this code. Or if you come across an online form asking you to share your seller ID, this is exactly what they expect you to share. So please, if possible, memorize it. If you can't miss up here, as long as you know where it is from, it's the first thing on your profile page. Number two is personal details. Please make sure you've updated your personal information. It is mandatory. Uh, always make sure you fill in the correct phone number and the correct email address because we will be communicating with you occasionally, especially when we want to reach out, uh, uh, maybe because of an important update or maybe something about your account. So please make sure that you fill in the correct email address and phone number. On the same note, um, if you ever want to change your shop name, unfortunately, you will notice you can't do it yourself. If you ever want to change your business name, you'll need to come to the top of your seller center and click on this button you see here, Imandikwa Raise a Claim. Raising a claim simply means you're contacting the vendor support team, okay? So call, fill in the form, uh, let them know what your issue is, that this situation is, you want to change your shop name. So change your, uh, just write the current name and the, current, the, the name you want them to change it to. Then they'll do it. It usually takes between one to two days after, okay? So that's the only thing you will not be able to edit yourself. Okay, so if you ever want to change your shop name, please raise a claim to have the vendor support and do it for you. Same thing when it comes to business information, please make sure that it's updated as well. Um, mostly this is due to being compliant. So please make sure that you fill in your national ID card and your care and certificate if you are an individual or a sole proprietor, you meaning how now your company is not registered. So please make sure you fill in or attach your national ID card and your carry pin. If you are a registered business, please make sure you attach or fill in your business registration number and the required business documents, all right? This is mandatory. Failure to do this actually leads to deactivation of your account because it is required in the setting up of your seller center account. Then moving on to the bottom, we have bank account. So this is where you fill in your preferred mode of payment. So this is where Jumia will be able to see how you want to be paid. You have two options. You have the option, you can find this under mode of payment. You have the option of choosing between EFT or M-Pesa. So of course, Ukitago M-Pesa, we just need you to fill in these two details, M-Pesa phone number and M-Pesa name. Come on, Ukitago EFT. EFT it just simply means bank transfer. We need you to fill in four major details and that includes the bank name, of course, the account name, the account number, and the branch. Those are the four major details we need. So the bank, account name, account number, and branch. Moving on down, we have holidays. Holidays allows you or enables you to turn off your account. Sometimes when there's a part of an emergency, I'm a hawker around, I'm a you've traveled, or maybe you're not feeling okay, right? Whatever personal reason that you may be having. Sometimes when I tell Kozima account temporarily, you can do this by putting your account on what we call holiday mode. Putting your account on holiday mode requires you to fill in the date. So of course, me and I'll not be around from the 19th. I'll be back on the 28th, right? Once I do that, I click on save. So that means my account will go from the 19th and till the 28th. So it will go back live on the 29th. So that means my customers, they will not see my items between the 19th till the 28th. And that's what I want. I don't want people to place orders as let me see. Go. Okay. So that's what you should do. In case you're not around or you're not available, please always be putting your account on holiday mode so that customers do not place orders on your account and their orders get canceled because you're not there to process them. Because that can also lead to the activation of the account because of two many cancellations. So the only way customers and Jumia can know you're not around or you're not available is when you put your account on holiday mode. So for, for whatever period of time, you're not there, okay? At the very bottom, we have the contract, a very important document that a lot of vendors fail to read, and then they end up making these mistakes at the beginning. And my personal advice I give in all my classes, don't start business on Jumia if you've not read the contract. So the contract is always available at the very bottom of your profile page. Then lastly, uh, the last thing on your profile page that I want you to take note of is our commissions and fees structure. 
So at the beginning, I failed to mention this. So something that you need to know here is that as you will continue selling your products, or rather as you will be selling your products on Jumia, there's uh, certain fees that we deduct. Maybe some of you already seen or know about it, but some of you maybe don't. Um, the fees are call commission and shipping cost contribution. Every time you'll be selling your product on Jumia, we will be deducting commission and shipping cost contribution. Okay, this is how Jumia now makes money. I want to just emphasize on this. These deductions are not done come how there's a let's say this whole month, Akuna Kitunimosa, there's nothing Jumi will come and deduct. I just need to clarify that. The only time Jumi in a deducting commission and shipping cost is only when you've sold. Okay. Yeah. So um where so let me show you where you can view this now. The question is how much? Because I know now everyone is asking how much, how much is the fees for my products, how much is the fees for my products? So we're back to the top of our profile page. We come to this link here, Mandico Commissions and Fees. So you click on it like that, and then you'll land on this page. Okay, so so far we are here. Now, since we're looking for two types of charges, let's start with one at a time. Let's start with commission. So commission, you'll notice, is the first thing you'll see on the page. So what you do is you come to the right-hand side, you click on View, like that. And then you'll see a very long list of categories so things uh, items all these products that you all of you are selling are put into categories because you can't put animal feeds in the same group as baby products or in the same group as electronics or in the same group as process you understand so items are usually put in groups and these groups are called categories so you have to identify item in a belong to group gani or in a belong to category gani so that you're able to narrow down and find the exact commission you'll be deducted a uh, quick typer, someone who's very really fast in typing, give me an example of a product you're selling. We use it as an example to search for commission or anyone who can unmute their mic. Quickly, a uh, product we can search for commission. Okay, Sube says, Sube says, Sube fabrics. So let's look for fabrics. Um, so fabrics belongs to fashion, right? So we'll come to the fashion category, we open it up, right? And then here we see fabrics. Right, so any form of fabric, right? Men's unisex or women's fabric, we see for women commission will be 20, for men and unisex commission will be 15 percent. So now she knows that for every fabric that she's going to post on top of the price in Yanata Kulipwa at Anafa Kuongeza, 15 percent on top or 20 percent on top based on the fabric that she is selling. Okay, yeah, another example, I'll take one more. One more example. Anyone else who would want us to search for the commission? Okay, laptops. Okay, so for laptops, we'll go and search for laptops here. So laptops is under computing, right? So we, let me close this. So we'll come to the computing category. We open it up. We see computers, we open it up until we see the word laptops. Okay, if you notice what I'm doing is I'm searching for the product until I see the product name. Okay, so here I see laptops and desktops. I open it up. I see laptops back here. Okay, Jumi is going to charge us 88% rather. Okay, so I know, or they know now, for every laptop they're going to sell, 8% is how much they'll need to add on to their price. So as you can see, different items on Jumi have different commissions. Actually, our commissions vary from as low as 5% to as much as 25%. So you notice some of you, Mutapata commissions are 5, we're getting 11, others 10, others 12, others 15, others 20, others 25%. So do exactly what I've done. Search for your product until you see the exact commission uh, that should be deducted for your product. Okay. So that was commission. Now let's look for the second charge. So for the second uh, fees that we talked about, which is called shipping cost contribution, we come back to the same link, commissions and fees. Okay. Now, while we're here, you'll notice you won't see it. I'll tell you on this page. So what you're supposed to do is just come to the top right-hand side and search for the word shipping. Okay. When you do that, you'll see two results that look alike. The one that all of you are supposed to use is this one, shipping cost for drop shipping, because all of you are actually in the um, in the drop shipping process. Because drop shipping just simply means dropping off your orders every time you'll be getting an order on your on your account. Okay, so you just come to the right hand side, same procedure, click on view, return to the same list of the categories, but this time now with a different amount. So using those two examples, let me start with the laptops. We come to computing, we see 
for laptops, they'll be deducted 200 shillings as well. So apart from the 8% commission, 200 shillings will be deducted as shipping cost contribution. So this vendor now knows every, uh, for all the laptops I am planning to sell on Jumia, apart from the 8%, Nita Ongeza 8% to the price and also 200 shillings as well. Because every time I'll be selling my laptops, Jumia will be deducting a 208% commission from my amount. Okay. Uh, quickly going to the fabrics. So we come to fashion. We see fabrics. Right. So for fabrics, 25 shillings. So apart from the 15, 20% we saw as commission, 25 shillings will be deducted as um, shipping cost contribution. Once again, shipping cost contribution pay in a vary uh, from as low as 25 shillings to as much as 400 shillings. So some of you interpret 25, we're getting 75, we're getting 50, we're getting 100, we're getting 200 and all that. Okay. Once again, it depends on the category of your product. Okay. Yeah. So this is where you'll be able to view your commissions and fees. All of this is still within your profile setting or the profile page. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about is manage users. In case anyone here has a business partner or you have an employee, this happens for some businesses and you want them to access the last center. Like in your you could share the same password. Okay. So if you happen to be having an employee or uh, you have someone that you want to access the last center, just add them as a user. Very simple. Uh, once you are, once you select manage users, you land on this page, then select add user like that. And you'll be able to add this person as a user. Just simply fill in their email address and their name. And then you can even select what access you want to give them, right? So once you've done all that, click on save. Then I'm there that person to check their email because they'll be sent a link requesting them to create a password. Okay, so from then on, both of you can log into Seller Center. You're using your separate emails and your separate passwords. The maximum users you can add is six. Okay, yeah. So that's everything about the profile functions. Uh, taking questions, only questions on what we've talked about. Any questions? Uh, I can see Sue has asked, after my holiday mode is over, do I need to raise a claim before it is activated again or that it does so automatically? Holiday mode, remember, you're done who's going to activate it. So you don't need to raise a claim for anything. You can deactivate a, a holiday mode if you are back sooner. But just remember, if you've put holiday mode, let's say uh, 20th, right? So that means on the 21st, your products will go back live. Until maybe when attacker could extend your holiday mode, you can go and extend the date. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, once the, the date, yeah, the end date, Kifika, the next date will go back live. Unless you attack will extend it, you can go back and edit the date so that it extends further. Mm -hmm. Is packaging done after product drop off? We'll talk about that in, in operations, not now. On the profile, even when you select and paste the EFT field and uh, on the profile, even when you select and paste the EFT field, an account name and number is still no mandatory. What should we input? Just put your details, then it's okay. The reason why it's doing this is because in case maybe M Pesa payments cannot be done on your account, maybe you, you end up making sales more than the, the M Pesa threshold. Uh, we always just automatically send you bank transfer. So just go ahead and input. Okay. It doesn't hurt. Just leave your details. Any other question? Okay, so quickly move on to the next topic. Let's talk about content creation and management. So here we're going to talk about how to add products on your seller center. But I'll start with calculation of commissions and fees. So in case maybe there's someone here, Badu Ajalo, how to calculate the commissions and fees, I'll give an example. I use an example of a vendor Munyanoza phone cover. So this vendor knows a phone cover for 400 bob, okay? Um, Akaona on Dreamy or rather checking on the seller center, they saw that commission your phone covers is 15%. So adding 15% into 400, that is 15 over 100 times 400, we get 60 shillings. So we come and add that 60 bob into 400 bob, okay? Then the second charge we were told to add is shipping cost contribution. Account shipping cost your phone cover ni 25 bob. 
So adding 25 bob on top of 460, we find the total amount of the phone cover to be sold on Jumia will be 485 bob. So this phone cover will be sold for 485 shillings on Jumia. Every time a customer will buy this phone cover, of course, at a labor of 485, I love before Jumia will pay the vendor from 485, I want to deduct the 25 bob, then what I deduct the 15%, then whatever remains, hopefully it's the 400 is what the vendor will be paid, okay? So that's a rough idea of how you will be calculating your commissions. Just to emphasize this as well, Jumia does not calculate your prices for you. We are not allowed to do that. All prices should be calculated by the vendor themselves. So that's why to where you can view the commission so that you use that chart to be able to guide you in calculating your prices, right? Now, method number one of adding a product is called Jumia Production Services. Just by the name, it's a service. We offer services in content creation alone. The services they offer include content writing, image editing, and photography, okay? The reason why this service is popular among sellers is because, of course, it's convenient, right? The fact that see when you have content, you have content is a bonus. Number two, it's affordable. You'll see the prices. Number three is that uh, it's faster. If you will compare when you will sit down and create content yourself versus when they will create content for you, it will take a way shorter time when they do it, okay? So the sooner your content is created, the sooner you start selling. That's the whole point. Then finally, your content is professionally done. And that's another bonus because since these people already know what kind of language, how to write a good name, how to write good description, what kind of photos to take, it, it increases better customer engagement with your product, increasing your chances of selling, okay? So that's another bonus of using such a service. Where can you access the service? Very simple, at the top of your seller center. I told you I'll show you the function of this thing. So you see this green image? written images and content, click on it like that. It will click to this form. So simply fill in the form and then the list of services which is your napaching. And these are the services with their prices. So as, as you're selecting the service, you'll see how much it costs you. So you're able to make an approximation of how much it costs you in total, okay? Then we have, that's content writing alone, right? These are the packages for content writing. We have the package for image editing, Pekiake. It starts from as low as 23 shillings per product. So if you only want your products to be edited photos, it should only cost you 23 bob. Photography in a tegemea, what kind of photography you want. But then if you want simple photography and uh, we advise you come visit our studio, it's at Cantaria Hub, and it will only cost you 29 shillings per product. And they give you an average of three to five photos for each item, right? Yeah. So choose the service of your choice, or if you want a full package, may I want more than one service. I want them to write content, and appear and attack our figure fit, and appear and attack our edit. So it depends. So if you want a combination of jobs, that's what you mean by full package. Select the service of your choice. You'll be able to see how much it costs you for that. And uh, once you've filled in the whole form, click on submit. Then you'll receive a confirmation email or a call. I'm not sure if they still give calls, send out calls, but then they'll send you an email notifying you that they've received your request. They'll send you an invoice within that email, so you need to make payment before the service starts. So you will be required to pay before the service starts, right? Once the service is complete, you'll also be notified as well, so that you can do quality check and see if you're satisfied with what the, with the job they've done, okay? So that is Jumia Production Services. The second method of adding a product is manual product creation. So here I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to add a product from beginning till the end, okay? But I'm just going to, I'm just giving you highlights or rather I'm giving you in brief in summary what you're supposed to do. But if you want to get an in-depth detail on how to create a product, I will advise you to use this website. You see this link written content creation guidelines, this red one. Okay, when you click on that link like that, it takes you to this website. It's a whole website just talking about content creation. So if you want even to be given examples on how to write a, a name or an example of how to write description for your category, the good thing is that this website can do that for you. So you just come to categories, after item that could belong to category Ghani, and it will actually give you an example on how to write content for that category from beginning till the end, okay? But I'll also take you through some of the steps as you move on, right? So where do you begin when you want to add a product? You begin by coming, of course, you've already logged into your seller center. You come to the products menu, upper. Once you click on it, just select other product. Once you select other product, click on this, create a new product. 
okay? Then once you've done that, it takes you now to the first section and that is identifying the category of your item, okay? Yeah, so uh, let me identify. I saw some people had left names of the product. Someone said nursing pillows. So let's for, search for nursing pillows. Okay, searching for nursing pillows. Oh, let me search for pillows, please easier so searching for pillows we see um nursing pillows we come to baby okay mm. oh yeah here they are so i think they're called maternity pillows i don't know <laughs> right so here it is maternity pillows right because it's under baby products Right. I'm assuming that's the one. <laughs> so yeah, so you click on select, right? So once you've identified the category, once you've identified the category of your item, it takes you to the next page. But then this is what everyone of you, each and each one of you will experience because it's the same, it's the same process for any product that you list. So the next page is you write the name. A good name should always follow this guide. This is the best guide to follow when writing a name. Even you'll see it on the website. A good name should show you the size, the material, the color, and the name of the item. If you realize on the website, items are not just written bag, table, bottle, pillow, mask. No, you have to give a proper name for it. Identify what's the size of the item, then what's the material, then that's what's the color, then finish off now with the name of the item. Separating each detail with the hyphen, this dash you see here. Of course, use this as a guide and you use where applicable. Why I'm saying this is because, of course, maybe some of you are selling items as in a size, so you can ignore the size part. When getting knows item as in a material, you can't identify the material, ignore the material part. So when getting you're selling items, you can't identify the color, you can ignore the color part. But then the main point is use this as the guide to write a good product name, okay? So giving a product name, I don't know, do, do pillows come in sizes? I don't know. If, let me assume it doesn't. Let me start my name from material. The material is, oh my God, I don't know. Let me say cotton. I really don't know the material for my pillows. Then we say color is blue, right? Then the name of the item is uh, nursing or maternity pillow. Okay. Yeah, and that is how I've given the name of my product. You see how that has helped me write a proper name? What you're not supposed to write on the name, as you can see, it's been written in capital letters because a lot of vendors ignore to see this, is don't write the brand on the name. Write the brand here. That's why there's a brand section below, okay? So whatever the brand may be, right? As you start typing, you'll see, uh, Seller Center's already tried to identify the name of the brand because Seller Center already has a database of all brands, okay? Yeah, so as soon as you start typing, you see, as soon as I start typing, it's identified the name of the brand, okay? Yeah. Now, what if your brand doesn't exist? Maybe let's say the name of my brand is called Lamin, but they're telling me that the brand doesn't exist in the database. Some of you might find this happen happening. What you do is you come to the top of the seller center, then you'll see this link, brand creation. You see this, click on it, fill in the form. It's a very short and simple form. Why are you filling the form? So that Jumia can create the brand for you. So fill in the form with the name of the brand you want us to create, give it one to two days, they'll send you an email, once the brand has been created. It's that simple, okay? Yeah, so if you ever find that your brand doesn't exist, just fill in the form, it will be created. Scenario number two, brand, item yangu haina brand, it's plain. My nursing pillow, hakuna malikuna jina brand. Some of you might, might be selling such items that are brandless. If in case you're selling brandless items, please replace the name of the missing brand with generic. Anything that doesn't have a brand, you should use the word generic in place of the brand that is not there, okay? Any item that you're selling that doesn't have a brand, use the word generic as the brand. If you're selling fashion items that don't have a brand, don't use the word generic. For you guys, you'd use the word fashion, okay? I'm assuming you all know what fashion items are. Fashion items are anything from clothing to accessories, anything from shoes, clothes, bags, anything that is worn by the human body is categorized as fashion. And if it happens to be that easy items are called in a brand and they're in the fashion category, please replace the missing uh, name of the brand with fashion. Everyone else selling brandless items, you'd use the word generic and you put together. 
Scenario number three, I'm selling a designer. And my, my pillow is Gucci, right? Uh, but then you see, as soon as they fill in that name, they're telling me that the brand is restricted. Then that I need to share a license or an authorization letter. Something that I need to let you know now is that Jumia is very, very specific, or rather it's very, um, it's against rather counterfeit products from being sold on the website. So it is important for you to know that before you even post a product, do you have a license for that item or that brand? especially if that brand is restricted because there is a very long list of brands that are banned on the website and only people who have authorization letters to show and prove that they're selling the original item will be allowed to sell okay if you don't have this document you will not be allowed to sell on the website okay why because who likes buying counterfeit products who likes paying um, a lot of money so that they're, they end up being a fake or a duplicate or an imitation, no one, okay? So this is mostly to protect our customers from fake items being sold on the website. Also, the other reason is because we happen to be having this brands already on the website. So of course they will not want people selling counterfeit, selling their products alongside them, okay? You will be sued. There are a lot of vendors who have been sued in the past. So please be careful. If you ever list your brand name, no one in the this long, long notification, don't post that product unless you know you have an official document to prove that you're allowed to sell it, right? And the only way you'll be allowed to sell it, of course, is if you're selling an, an original item. Number two, another place you'll know brands that are restricted. I'll share with you this link on email, okay? It shows you the full list of all the restricted brands on Jumia, okay? So this is where you see it. It's a whole database, whole list of all the restricted brands we have on Jumia. Come to this form, Angalia Kama Brand Yaku Ikoapa. Kama Ikoapa, so you cannot sell it. But if your brand is not here, you can tell it, meaning that it's not restricted, okay? So yeah, moving on, we have model. This is only for people selling electronics. In case there's anyone in this call, when you know electronics, please write the model number of your electronics. Yeah, you see they've been giving you examples of model numbers that are required. Um, if you're not selling electronics like me, I'm getting cottage for nursing pillow, that's like not applicable for NA. Color, another section where you need to write the color of your product. If you're selling an item that comes in different colors or different flavors, for example, my nursing pillow it comes in blue, but I also have it in pink and white. So I have three different colors for this nursing pillow. That will mean I'll create three different products. I put together. Each color should be created as a separate item. Each flavor should be created as a separate item. If I'm selling yogurt and my yogurt comes in vanilla, uh, strawberry, and uh, whatever, raspberry, that means I'll create the three different products too for each different flavor. So each color should be created as a separate item, right? Moving on, we have more product details. And the more product details, we have tax class. Does your item have VAT or not? Very simple. You have two options. If positive means yes, there's VAT. Zero means no, there's no VAT. This is so that the customer knows whether what they're buying or what they're paying for is going to VAT or not. If you realize, if you're a supermarket, you keep a receipt, you know, you a VAT. Well, anything that you buy in this country, anything that you pay for, even services, when you're at a restaurant, you'll see when you're paying for your food, the receipt has VAT information. Any service or any product that is purchased will always show you if the, the amount of VAT or the, if there's VAT included in the price. So same thing will happen here. Whenever customers buy the products on Jumia, the information also still has to be shown in the receipt as well. So if there's VAT in your price, please indicate the 416. If there's no VAT in your price, select zero. I have put together, okay? Product information, right? Most of the times, is in any information you can find on the package of the product. Right? I'm an information who shall draw about the item. So try and fill in as much as possible. And let's say vendors avoid leaving blank spaces. What you don't know, at least put a dash or write NA. Okay, avoid leaving blank spaces. All right. So what you what you know, please go ahead and indicate what's the main material, what's the main color family, size. Uh, it, please make sure it's written it in the dimensions of centimeters. Weight, please make sure it's in kilograms. So come on, item meaku in a way in grams. Make sure you've converted the weight to kgs before posting, if you can. Moving on down, we have product description. This is now where you're explaining how the item works. A good description should always tell the customer the features of the item, meaning 
what is that item made of? What does it have? What are the physical uh, features of this product? Number two, how does the item work, right? Or rather, how can it be used, right? This is especially for people selling technical things, of course. Maybe if you know you're selling something like an electronic or something that you know uh, customers will, will need guidance in understanding how it, it, it should be used or how it, it works, you will need to indicate that information, right? Then number three is benefits, right? What are the benefits of using this product? This applies to people selling things like, um, let me say things like vitamins or supplements, right? You tell your customer, of course, when you buy this vitamins, or these vitamins are good for zinc or calcium or iron or whatever, right? Deficiency, or they're good for children, or they're good for grown-ups above this age, they're good for bones, or they're good for this, or it can be anything. It's, sometimes it can be even in, in hair products. For example, I say, or oh, this lotion or this oil or this shampoo or this whatever is good for hair growth or hair strengthening or whatever, right? That's what you mean. That's an idea of what you mean by benefits, right? So it of, of course depends on what it is you're selling. Then lastly, your content should be, or your description should be simple. Avoid using hard terminologies, you'll confuse your customer. If you need to use a hard terminology or a hard word, please try and define it so that the customer understands what you mean, okay? So uh, always be simple. Simple is good, right? So yeah, so a good description should make sure you've covered features, how it works or how it's used, benefits, and it should be simple to understand, right? Highlights, the, the summary. Basically, everything, and whatever, everything that you had already written in your description is what you're supposed to give in your highlights, right? So when you talk about highlights, it's, like I said, a summary of your description. And you've been told it should be in bullets. And when you say bullets, you mean you select this. At least four points. What are the main things the customer needs to know about the product? Maybe it's information, of course, you had written already in your description, but then now here you're writing it in short, simple, and to the point. Okay. For example, the main thing here is that people, of course, want to know the material. Main material is cotton. Right. Main material is cotton. Right. Um, honestly, I don't know what to write about nothing below. Um, can support right uh children or, or uh, babies right up to honestly i'm just writing the version right here up to let's say um six months right so you know as in like uh, whatever uh, uh has has uh, let me say further insert honestly right i'm just gonna paint a picture here um and i say uh, comes uh, with a um, removable cover, right? Maybe you can be able to easily wash the external cover. Whatever, I'm just trying to give, give an idea. So you see, I've tried to write the main highlights because I know when someone is looking for a nursing pill, of course they want to know the material, the fabric, they want to know the insert, is it comfortable? Uh, does it give good support? Uh, but yeah, so you uh, apply the same to the nature of your product. What are the main things you'll know the customer will be interested in knowing? I'm sure it's everything you wrote in your description, but then now here it's like you're trying to emphasize or point it out further and you should, it, it's in short, simple uh, points, okay? At least four points, three to four points is good, right? What's in the box means what should the customer find in the package? For me, they just find one nursing uh, pillow, right? Yeah, so the friend one nursing pillow. If you're selling an item in Akuja and accessories, please indicate kuna wenye mnoza items in Akuja na manual, kuna wenye mnoza items in Akuja na maybe an extra cable or an extra cover. So if in case your item will happen to be having something extra inside the package, please in indicate. If it won't, just wait, of course, the, the product alone. Care label does not apply to anyone. I will ignore that. Same to YouTube ID. I'll just jump to the bottom. Uh, additional product information. This is mostly for people selling items that are perishable. Perishables are items that have an expiration date. Anything that you know you're selling that has an expiration date, you need to fill in information in this section. So it mostly applies, you need to indicate where was that item produced, then indicate the expiry details. For me, because I've selected I'm selling pillows or pillowcases or rather the pillow, whatever, it's asking me for uh, area of use or assembly type. It doesn't need any assembly, right, and all that, right? But then mostly additional product information is for people selling perishable items, basically items that have an expiration date that need to be indicated because your customer needs to know the expiry details. 
We know that we have product warranty. Product warranty is applicable to people selling items uh, that are electronics. Electronic sellers are required to indicate the warranty of your product. Is it one year? Is it six months? Is it three months? Is it two years? Please make sure you've indicated. If you're selling electronics that don't have warranty, don't leave this blank. You must write there no warranty. Because don't just assume we get a blank cut matter or oh, you left blank because you don't have warranty. Because it will, it will consist that did you forget? Right? Yeah, so please, if you're selling electronics and they don't have warranty, write there no warranty. If you're selling electronics that do have warranty right there, the period of warranty, whatever period it will be. Moving on to the next section, we have product pricing. This is where you need to indicate the price of your product. One is price, okay? Um, as you can see, as soon as I put my mouse here, the system is reminding me the price should be inclusive of Dreamer commission and fees. So come about to call myself to calculate. You're being reminded to do it before posting the final price there, okay? Quantity means how many pieces you have in stock for that product at that moment. Product SKU, SKU stands for stock keeping unit. That's what it stands for, stock keeping unit. Now for stock keeping unit, this is a short, simple code you'll create for your product. So every product you're going to list on your seller center, you must create a short, simple code. You can make up anything you want. You can make up a code using numbers or letters, anything that you feel comfortable with. For example, I can just create a short, simple code and say NP blue, right? Yeah, so that's the code I've created, right? So you can use anything, letters, numbers, anything that you want. Then variation is sizing. This is especially for people selling fashion or any other thing that comes in sizes. For example, I'm selling a pair of shoes and these shoes come from size 36 to size 40, right? Where will I be able to show these sizes? Just show them under variation. You just create as many spaces as you want by clicking add another product variation like that, okay? So you can be able to list down as many sizes as you want. So this is where you can show your sizes, all right? Yeah. Then lastly, we have images, right? What do you need to keep in mind as you're posting images for your products on the website, right? You need to note the following. One is your images should be taken on a white background. It is ideal for your photos to be taken on a white background. Number two, have a minimum of two images. Uh, try and show your customers all angles of your product. That's what we mean, right? So if you can, you can even share up to eight. You see you have eight slots, right? But if you can't, at least a minimum of two, right? Or, or more than that, if, if possible. Then we have no watermarks. Don't put watermarks on your images. You've seen how on social media, someone has taken a photo of a product they're selling, but then across the image, they've, they've shown their shop name or the phone number. You know, it's so that people don't steal the photo, but on Dreamer, that is not allowed. The images should be clean with no watermarks on them. And then lastly, use real photos. Use real photos. Try and share real photos of products because we want to reduce the cases where customers keep saying what you order versus what you get is never the same, right? Those memes that you keep saying. So we want to reduce the, the cases where customers keep saying how the image looks like versus how the product looks like is very different. So try and share real photos amongst the photos you're planning to post for your product. So once you've posted your images, just come here and click on submit and finish. And that is how you create a product yourself. Remember, this is just me touching on the, uh, the main tips, but you learn further if you use the content guideline website, right? It will now give you examples where you can be able to now write the, the details as you move on, as it's giving you examples as you continue, right? Now, by the time you finish adding your product, your content score must be at 55 and above. You see this number, right? It's called the content score. So every product that you create must reach 55 and above before it qualifies to be reviewed, okay? But if your content score is not at 55, unfortunately, your item does not qualify to be reviewed. So for you to be able to push the number to 55, you just simply come and put your mouse on that there and you'll see the things you did correctly are in green and those that you didn't do correctly are in red so of course the ones that are in red is what you need to improve on so that the content score goes up right yes products do go through review and this usually takes between one to two days after you've submitted your product they will send you an email to confirm once the review is complete or rather quality check so you'll be notified of the number of products that passed quality check and those that failed if there's any that failed quality check Okay, 
yeah so those that pass that means that the product is live on the website and it's being seen by customers okay so that's what happens lastly how do you manage the products you've created so we come to products uh, menu once again and select manage products okay so here it's very simple i'll just show you a, a, a few things and that includes how to update information for a product you've already posted. Number one, on the far right hand side, you can see edit. You can edit a, uh, a product that you've already posted, right? You can change the name, you can change the description, you can change the images if you want, right? You can even delete a product if you no longer want it to be on your seller center. Right? Number two is price. You can change the price of your product if you ever want to change your price. Because remember, this is your product. You don't know is the price in the market or whatever profit you want to gain. You can edit the price of your product whenever you want. Number two is sell price. I didn't talk about sell price earlier because I was going to cover it here. So sell price is discount. Do you want to treat your customers to an offer? Go ahead. So for example, instead of buying this um, body lotion for 100 bob, I want customers to enjoy a discount where they can get it for 85 bob, right? And I want the discount to start from tomorrow or whatever period. I want it to start from maybe 21st till next year, December, right? Yeah, so you can put your discount to run for however long you want, right? So you do that and click on apply and then save, right? That means your product will go live for with that discount. So if you ever want to teach your customers to an offer, just put up a sale price. Then lastly, we have available. Available means stock. How many pieces do you have for this item? Every time Utakuna Pata order, the system will automatically reduce the stock. For example, right now I have 40. Right now, if I get two orders, the system will automatically change the stock to 38. Every time order it in India, it will automatically deplete the stock. Okay. But now the problem comes in when it comes to updating the stock. You find that a lot of vendors are forgetting to update their stock on time. Order in India Coastal Center, the vendor is not able to process because in Ikitwakwa now in stock. What do they do to the order? They cancel. But then cancellation as well is highly prohibited on Dreamer because it actually leads to termination of your account because there are a lot of vendors who are trying to come back due to cancellation of the account, right? So please be careful. Canceling, high cancellation of orders does lead to deactivation of your account and also penalties, right? So please avoid canceling your orders. What do you need to do? Update stock on time. What you know you don't have make sure you've come to seller center and change the stock to zero like that okay so that the product goes off or just turn it off like this so that customers are not able to see and buy the product when you don't have it in stock you need to remember to do this before orders come in because when orders come in you see your responsibility to make sure you process right avoid canceling your orders what you don't have zima make sure you do this on time before orders come in because now when an order comes in it's your responsibility to make sure you process the order Okay, canceling of orders is highly disguised. And from now on, for the rest of the time remaining in the class, it is something I'll be emphasizing on because we are trying to reduce the number of canceling or rather the cases of cancellation. Okay, update your stock on a regular basis. If it means updating your stock twice a day, then you have to get used to updating your stock twice a day. There are vendors who update the stock even three times a day because of course, Jume is not the only place we know you're selling your products. You have Sky Garden, you have Killing Mall, you have your Facebook pages, you have physical shops as well. So of course, this item that you know is the same, is the same items you know as Akila Mali, but then you forget that stock levels keep changing. Orders of Facebook, Zimemalism you stock item, or my part order Jume or Mishinoku process, you need to remember to update your stock as soon as possible to avoid canceling orders. And that's everything about content creation and management. Any questions before we move on to the next topic? Yes, Marcy. Go ahead. Uh, say, for example, you've put products. Um, I sell hair. So, like, I have different bundles. I have 8, 10, and 12. So, I'm going to use the example you used for shoes eh? when you are uploading the product. Mm -hmm. When I uploaded, I realized that it, it, it did enlist the eight, but then the 10, uh, when, when you view the, the, you do the preview, you can see the eight and 10, but it's only showing the price for eight and not the 10. Okay. As you can see, when you're adding a product here. Yeah. Um, to go back. Okay. Uh, let me use this side. 
So when you're listing here, if you want to add variation, let's assume I've added. So let's say this is the eight inch, eight, and this is the 10 inch. You see, you have to also change the price, okay? So if you didn't change the price for 10, of course it will go up with the eight inch price. No, I did. It it's actually two separate. Uh, but then for some reason when I did the preview, I could see like uh, the, the the product has been listed there. The narration is eight and ten. So I clicked on the eight, the price came. But when I clicked yeah. on the ten, there was no price. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, you said uh, this is after the item has been reviewed. Uh, it hasn't been okay. I have not received any message yet. The, I just opened, so, okay. uh, uploaded, I uploaded, mm -hmm. and then I was just viewing it on my own, just to see okay. what I have that I had done. Ah, okay, okay. So, so it, the item. Yes. Is, so is I had the eight inch showing very clearly the price, but then yeah. the ten inch and uh, what you have on the screen right now is what I had, and I had all mm -hmm. the the SKU. I had the price and the availability. Mm -hmm. oh, not showing. okay we can uh, check it out we'll see uh maybe it's just a, a technical issue but then it's supposed to show um is, is do you know the name of the product we can just check it out on the website uh okay so maybe you can... okay glam glam point the the name of the product itself Oh, the product, yeah. let me see what I put there. Yeah. Uh, the name was Straight Indian Virgin Hair. Human Hair. Uh, oh, wait, okay. Uh-huh. Wow, okay. Uh, well, just la let's just use any example. Mm -hmm. But I can't see mine here. But uh, let's just click on one, then I can tell you. Oh, yeah. So um, it's supposed to show you saw eight. And you yes, saw eight, eight and, and ten. ten. But then ten. when I clicked on the ten, the price was not coming. It was it's as if it was showing the, same, the price for eight is the same. Okay, okay. Maybe that's just a, a technical error. You can just have it. Just uh, just leave me the name of the product and your shop name, and then I have someone look into it. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, Marcy, what's the email address? I should probably send to. No, I just, I'm saying just leave leave your email address and the name of the product. Okay. Here. So okay. If you have the SKU number as well, that will help. All right. Yeah, the SKU that looks like this. This SKU. Um, let me show you. This SKU. You see this. If you can share me this code, this SKU for your project. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, okay. Are there limits on the number of products? No, there are no limits. The more products you're selling, the better, honestly. Uh, the more products you, you can sell, the better. Actually, that does increase your chances of selling. So, there are no limits on the number of products you can sell on Jumia. Okay. Um, how or who files taxes for sales on Jumia if you fill zero? We don't file taxes for you. This is just like any business. I take Jumia as a mall. You see, there is a, let me use a common mall. Let me say, because, uh, okay, let me say Garden City. Okay. Jumia is like Garden City. So all the shops in Garden City, does Garden City file taxes for the shops? No. Okay. So same thing with Jumia. We don't file taxes for you. You your your own enterprises, your your own businesses. Of course, you'll be filing taxes for your own products. Jumia files taxes or for their, themselves. We file taxes on the commissions we're deducting from sellers only. Okay, yeah. So you know, we'll come back business you quick already. So you just nothing, nothing. As in, like if you're registered business, of course, if you're in uh, you you in line with KRA, be doing your your taxes, file your taxes. If you're not, well, okay. Um, oh, okay, so I'm telling me the main material. Oh, so I was right. So I'm not so far from the truth. How come images on Jumia are not on white background? Who is allowed to do that? So, of course, there's some vendors. Let me just tell you something. When you see people doing wrong, do you follow the wrong? No. Okay. So, of course, you can 
you can share images that are not on a white background, but then if I don't know if you've learned, I don't know anyone if, if there's anyone here who's learned about product uh, development or online product development, good content um, is always done. Good, good for pro product photography is usually done on a white background. Okay, it's mostly also for uniformity on this particular platform of ours, but then also it reduces distraction uh, when a customer is shopping or viewing your product. Words. But yes, if you can share images of the product in a different uh, background, but let it not let that not be the main images of the product. The main images of the product should be on a white background. At least the first one image or the second image should be on a white background. Then the other is fine. You can put it on a different colored background. Um, why do you check if you have a pending order that you need to work on? We'll talk about that in the next topic. Anything about content for now? Um, can you touch on how to manually add, create an SKU code for a new product? It's not creation. Like I said, you can make up any code of your choice, right? As long as every product that you're going to create has an SKU code, that's what I meant. It's nothing complicated. Just uh, just make up any number. You can put any any anything as a code, as an SKU. Which right. is your time to say something? Okay, is there any other question? Yeah, just a quick one from Scoville. Um, if your account has become dormant, can you hear me? Just a minute. Yes, go ahead. Okay, if your account had become dormant, uh, when you go to the seller center, do you need any activation again or registration again, or you just go ahead? after this training, because we we'll asked to attend this before we can proceed. Uh, it depends. Your account is dormant. Has it been deactivated? Or are you able to still access it? I'm still able to access it. Yeah, then just proceed. proceed. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Masi, where did you say we get our uh, the ID thing, the Jumi ID? On your profile page. Profile page. Mm -hmm. I see a question. Yes, Hafiz, continue. Yes, uh, good morning. I wanted to ask you. Yes. Uh, I put my brand on uh, where it says brand, and it's it says that the brand you want to add is restricted to official sellers. Please share with us your license to sell this brand by your authorization letter where do i send this authorization letter uh raise a claim yeah raise a claim this raise a claim raise a claim yes yes and attach the the letter okay so thank you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bye. sorry Basi, could you just point it out on the screen where to get that id thing i can't seem to get it it's the first thing on your profile page. Just here on your profile page, it's the first thing. Oh, okay, okay. This one, this is your cell ID. It's nowhere else. It's just the first thing on your profile page. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank um, you. Just reminding us that uh, please don't forget to upload your copy of your national ID and your PIN certificate. Like I said, this is required um, on your profile. Okay. Okay, so let's move on to the next topic then. If there are no questions on, on content. So let's talk about order management. So here I just want to talk about what, what are the processes that come after? Um, when you start getting orders, what should you do? And before I even touch on that, of course, I need to also touch on what should I do to become an active seller? What should I do to sell? Okay, because that's also something that you need to keep in mind, right? That's how there's, you need to put effort into that. Okay. So it's not a matter of working hard. These days, it's a matter of just working smart. You just need to be smart on what, you, what you're doing. And uh, the following characteristics will give you a boost in getting orders. One is a wide range of products. Like someone had asked me earlier, is there a limit on the number of orders you can add? No. Actually, from a survey we took uh, over five years ago, we realized that vendors who have more than 20 products in the account do not struggle to sell compared to vendors with less than 20. 
okay because honestly i will be honest it's uh, jumia is not it, not all businesses work for everyone because there are vendors on jumia who have not sold for one year for two years for months right but like i said you just need to identify your niche you need to know what to do to improve your chances of selling and one of them is having a wide range of products you can sell across categories do you know you can sell face masks in the same shop you can sell books in the same shop you can sell makeup in the same shop you can decide and sell electronics in the same shop you can decide and sell anything right so you're allowed to sell across different categories because remember the goal here is a wide range of products also as you know you're, you're supposed to make your customer be spoiled for choice when you walk into a supermarket, have you noticed they like putting up those, uh, I don't know, the cuts, the, the sections where they put up the sales sign? Because they know, they know people have money, especially end month. So people are coming to do their grocery shopping. But then, of course, when they see a sale right, of something, you'll be tempted to buy. And that's the thing. When a customer walks into your shop, they should be tempted to buy because you have so many different varieties and everything is good quality and everything has good prices. So the point is to make customers be spoiled for choice and end up buying as many things as possible. Wide range of products affordable prices this fits for itself a majority of the people who are shopping online are young people and as you know even people in this call there's no time in any conversation you have ever bragged about how much money you spent on a product you always brag about how little you spent you always brag about how it just costed me easy right and that's exactly the point a lot of people are looking for affordable prices to get the the items they want to buy good quality images and description right I've spent a, 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 a whole 30 minutes explaining this. You need to invest in good images and descriptions, something that a lot of vendors are also not understanding. I, I can show you so many different people on the website, like the ladies ask me, people who are not taking the images in the right background. If you go and do background check, you'll see they're not getting as good sales as well as, you, as they want, right? Let me tell you something. Every, things should be pleasing to the eye. You know, the thing about online shopping is visualization. The reason why, have you ever visited websites like um, ASOS or Zara or um, Ali, Amazon, right, or AliExpress? Are you seeing how the quality of images are so nice? It's not for nothing. It's not that it's just for pleasing the eye. It always has a mental effect on, on human beings. When you, a lot of people uh, prefer looking at images. That's why we have social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. You spend so much time looking at images and videos because that's what's more pleasing to you, right? And that's the same thing. Customers are able to relate better with a nicely taken image of a product before they even start reading the description. I am more likely to click on a product that has a good image than the one that doesn't. So can you imagine you and your competitor are being seen by one customer. You're both selling the same item, but one of you has done such a shoddy job in the image and the other one has done such a good quality job. Who is like, which one, which one of you is likely to be chosen first by the customer? Of course, the person who has the best quality image, right? Images is key. It's a good representation of who you are as a business person because here, yeah, um, it's the same, look at it as the same concept of a lot of people these days when they're opening up shops in town, they spend a lot of money in interior designing and in deco. Why? Because you know that is what will make a customer walk into your shop, or rather that will be what's more aesthetically pleasing, right? But then now here, when it comes to online, you don't have a physical shop, so you can't do interior design. So what should you do? You should invest in interior design in your product, right? The kind of images, the kind of description that you write. Let it be pleasing to the eye. Let it convince the customer to interact with your product more. Let the customer choose you over your competitor because of how well your images are taken or how good your name is written or how good your description is done. Okay? Yeah. Good customer experience. This comes in two forms, quality products and fast delivery. What I always tell vendors when it comes to quality, of course, if you yourself can't use your product because it's not even good quality for you, don't sell it to us. A lot of times I've seen vendors selling quality of products. Yeah, and to me, a better phone, but then the phones they're selling are such bad quality. Or the vendor is using um, a better quality item, but then what they're selling to people is not of the same quality, right? If you yourself can't use the product that you're selling to customers, then that simply means that it's not good quality at all, right? Then don't sell it, okay? 
Like I said earlier, GMA is really prioritizing quality over quantity. Let me just tell you that. It's rather we have five products on the website than have 10 million products on the website that are bad quality. If you've ever shopped on Jumia, I don't know how many of you used to hear of Jumia before, you've ever used Jumia before, especially, I think, let's say, uh, five years ago, four years ago, when Jumia had a bad reputation because of the quality of products vendors used to post on our products before we had to tighten our policies. Vendors used to post anything and everything, right? And now we had to tighten our policy because this ruined our customer reputation and our expense, right? Customers never wanted to shop on Jumia ever again because you find that what they're buying is bad quality or the things they bought were fake, right? And that's why we are strict when it comes to quality sold on the website. Something I did not mention earlier, let me just let you know, if you found selling counterfeit products, the penalty is 20,000 shillings, right? This was a very big case last year because last year, a lot of new vendors during the first one month of paying penalty fines of 20,000 shillings in the first one month because of not reading instructions. Like I said, if you don't have a license or an authorization letter to post the brand that is restricted, don't post it. Don't sell it either because you will be penalized 20,000 shillings. If you're found with the second offense, your account is closed and with another penalty of 20,000 shillings. So you've not even started selling, you're already starting paying penalties. Does that make sense? No, right? So please be cautious. Quality of products is a must. It must be good, nothing less than that. Because even you, you see when you when you catch a cab after the end of your trip, see the, the, the driver tells you, please rate me. And you also rate them. Of course, five stars if you really like them, four stars or oh, above. But then of course, you always rate them badly, two stars and below, if maybe you did not enjoy your ride. That's exactly the same thing that happens here. Customers, after they've bought your product and they've used it, they always come back and leave a rating. So of course, the most passionate customers leave a rating either if they're really impressed or they're really disappointed. And trust me, those, those ones who are disappointed, they usually have a lot to say. They even write paragraphs of how they, that item was such bad quality. And as a new customer who wants to buy this product and you see someone has left such a horrible rating, would you even want to continue buying that product? No, and that's how you lose sales. I mean, that's, that's simple, right? People leaving bad reputation on your product. So please be careful on the quality of products you're selling on the platform. Fast delivery. 24 hours is the time Jumia gives you to process your orders, right? Why? Because have you ever shopped on social media platforms? These days, people can even deliver an order within the same day. So many times for me, uh, like, like I always giving, a, like giving an example, I've shopped on Instagram accounts and to my surprise, some of them even usually ask me, are you available right now? Right, because especially if you're within Nairobi, they can deliver the item or the package to you within the same day you've ordered. And that's what Jumia is competing with, okay? That's the reason why our delivery speeds are 24 hours because we don't want to lose customers. A simple concept I like telling vendors is the longer you take to process your orders, the higher the risk will lose your customer. Because even you, averagely when I ask people in my class, how long can you wait? What's the longest time you can wait for an order? Most vendors or most people usually say two days. Two days, right? Because you know how it feels when you're buying a new item and you can't wait to get it. Or maybe you, you have urgency for the item, right? So if you've taken longer than that to process the order, the customer's already bought it somewhere else. And that's how you've lost the sales. This is just very simple ways of losing, losing sales on Jumia, by the way, right? Not just on Jumia, even on social, any, any other platform that you'll be selling. Speed is really important. 24 hours is the time you're given to process your orders. Then lastly, give your shop visibility, right? Once you've set up your account, you've posted all your products, go ahead and share your link on your social media platforms, on those WhatsApp groups that you're in, right? So that people can easily find your shop on Jumia, right? So before you even start thinking of spending money on marketing, because I've seen this mistake happen as a lot amongst new sellers. Someone has already started asking me, so how much are your marketing services? Don't start spending money on marketing, yet you've not even invested in the bare minimum. Here's why. You have spent 50,000 shillings to pay for a banner on the website, right? And then when people click on that banner, they find your shop doesn't even have variety or cotona products really. Number two, prices are quite, they're not affordable, they're expensive. Number three, your quantity is so badly taken, it's not even impressive, right? Quality of your products, uh, we can see from other customers' reviews, they're not good. So you wasted your 50,000 because trust me, no one will want to buy, right? 
I hope you're understanding where I'm coming from. Don't start spending money on marketing. Don't start thinking of marketing, yet you've not covered the bare minimum. And the bare minimum are these five, six points. Actually, the five, right? Wide range of products, affordable prices, good quality images and description, deliver the best customer experience by having the best quality, making sure that you deliver orders on time. And then now go ahead and share your junior shop link with uh, your followers. Okay. Now, the life cycle of an, of an order is really simple. Once a customer has placed an order on Jumia, this order has to go through customer service, what we call verification. And once the order has been verified, the reason why rather we do verification is to just clean up an order because either the customer has maybe made a mistake or maybe on the number of pieces they were buying, or some people will, will tell you, I was just testing Jumia to see if it works. You know, So there are so many test dummy orders. So we have to clean them out before they're confirmed. So once an order has been verified by customer service, that's when the first status that order will pick is pending. So our first, the first status for your order is always pending status. Here, how do you know you have an order? Two ways. By default, to key part order, you'll get an email notification. Number two, you'll see the order appear on your seller center. So you'll also get a seller center notification. So I always tell my vendors, please read your emails on a daily basis. Get used to the habit of reading your emails the same way you read your WhatsApp messages daily, right? Because a lot of our notifications are sent via email and you also need to be visiting your seller center at least twice a day. Once you have, you know you have an order, what should you do next? You're supposed to process the order. Who can go process an order, what, what do they need? They need you to do the following. Number one, change the status of your order from pending to ready to ship. Number two, print the documents. And then number three, now go ahead and drop off the order they have. Those are the three things they expect you to do. I'll show you practically later on on how we can do this. Now, once you've changed the status and you're headed to the hub, what do you need to keep in mind? Okay, okay, end up to the hub, you're expected to carry the item, of course, make sure it's the right thing, and make sure you've carried the documents, make sure you've bought packaging material once you arrive at the hub, okay? At the hub, there's an agent who's going to receive you. They're going to do what we call quality check. This is usually done to confirm that what you've brought is exactly what the customer's ordered. So meaning the same color, the same number of pieces, the same size, everything. Basically, it should be identical to what the customer's ordered online. If your item has passed quality check, the status will be changed by the, by the agent from ready to ship to shipped. The agent is only going to change the status to shipped, okay? At this point, you will be required to process the order. Uh, sorry, to you'll be required to package the order. So what you do is you take that item, those documents you printed, and the packaging material that you bought. You start wrapping your orders. Okay, so you're the one who's going to uh, package your orders. Package it nicely, wrap nicely, attach the documents, seal the order, then hand it over to the agent. Then you're free to leave the hub. Now. Once Jumia receives your packages, what do we do with them? We take them to a place called a sorting center. This is where packages are sorted based on where they're going to be delivered, of course, location-wise, right? Now, the final statuses of an order are what you see on your far right. Delivered being one of them. A delivered package means the package has successfully been received by the customer. You're getting paid. Okay, on the status, the order matters delivery failed. That means that we tried to deliver the package. We called, we texted, we emailed the customer to remind them that there's an order that is awaiting collection. But if the customer never calls back or never uh, picks up or is never available to receive the order, we give the customer a maximum of seven days. Seven days occasion uh, item is not collected, we take back the order to the hub. So we take it back to your hub for you to collect it. Okay. Return status. The return policy on Jumia states that customers can return items within 15 days from the time they collected it. And when they return the item, we do quality check to see if the reason of return is genuine or false. If it's genuine, we give them um, two options. They can either ask for a refund or they can ask for a replacement. Okay. Now, um, uh, there is a list of products customers are aware of that uh, they know they can't return. Okay, there's a list of products that uh, you cannot return. For example, things you can't return include groceries, innerwear, um, makeup products, vitamins and supplements, and all that. Okay, yeah, sensitive products rather, and the works. Now, 
the final status you can see or you will find on your order is cancelled. Cancellation comes from three, three groups of people. The first group being customers. Customers are free to cancel orders where they, the main reasons of cancellation is usually either a change of heart or they're no longer interested or they, will not, they, they don't have funds to pay for the order or the brailers will be traveling so they'll not be allowed to collect the package. Then we have the second group, which is Jumia. Jumia cancels orders for only one reason, and that is lateness. You remember I told you you have 24 hours. So 24 hours has passed and you've not uh, processed your order. What, does the, what happens? Your order gets canceled. Then the third group is vendors. You remember I told you earlier, common reason why vendors cancel orders me. Um, we'll order, we can realize how a stock, okay, your vendor that canceled the order, right? Yeah, so those are the three points of cancellation. Right, and now that's how a full order cycle looks like. So if you ever see your order marked as cancelled, delivered, delivery failed and returned, you know what it means, right? Yeah, now to emphasize on the processes, remember 24 hours, 24 hours. For example, say in a battle order at 12.30, I have till tomorrow 12.30 to make sure that I'm already at the drop off hub, dropping off the order, okay? Or any other order that, that, that came in during that time, right? So make sure you process your orders within 24 hours. Number two, print the documents before coming to the hub. I get this question sometimes. Can Jumia print documents for me? No, we cannot. You need to print the documents before coming. Number three, quality check. Remember, when an agent is doing quality check, when Angalia Kama, the item on my letter is the same as what the customers ordered. So please make sure it's the same color, the same size. There's nothing wrong with the packaging, right? Because sometimes uh, some people will bring a dirty package, someone will bring a package in a condented item, package during a kaji. Please make sure that the packaging of that item is in good state. It will not be received in any other form. The manufacturer still should be intact, showing no signs of that item being used or opened before. Maybe if maybe I didn't say this earlier, I should say this now. We do not allow selling of secondhand items, okay? So no thrift and no used or opened items, okay? In case your item failed quality check, there's a penalty of a thousand shillings. So please, like I said, make sure you bring the right thing because if you fail to bring the right thing, maybe you brought less pieces than what was ordered, you brought the wrong color, you brought the wrong brand, the manufacturer package was bad, or the manufacturer seal was opened or missing, it is likely to attract the penalty of a thousand shillings, right? So the agent, what they do is they cancel the order. You go back with that item. At the end of that week, from your payment, you turn a deduction here, a thousand pops. Okay, so that's what happens, right? Now, packaging material, I really want to assume everyone here has ever bought something on Jumia, so you are familiar with the Jumia packaging materials. They usually come in two forms. It's either usually a, a box or that key nylon bag, it's called a flyer. Or if it's a large item, it's usually wrapped in some transparent material like cling film, right? Yeah, so they're different packages. So this price, the prices for these packages, of course, depend on the size um, and all the drop-off hubs we have for you have a packaging material store. So you can easily be able to buy your packaging material at any one of the drop-off hubs. You can buy in pieces, you can also buy in bulk, right? Uh, for example, the flyers, they range from as low as five shillings to as much as 15 bob for the largest flyer. The boxes, the smallest one is 30 bob, the largest one is 75 bob, okay? Uh, then we have cello tape, we have bubble wrap, we have cling film as well, which you can, if you can find them cheaper elsewhere in Sawa, like any the Jumia logo the packaging, you'll have to buy them from us. I'll send you this link on email. It's a link that usually shows you the kind of packaging you're supposed to buy based on the item. So I'm sure most of you have Jui packaging based on the item you're selling. So I'll send you that link. It will give you a guide based on the item you're selling, what kind of packaging material you should buy. Okay. Now, the drop-off hubs are six. Three of these are located within CBD area. One is at Tetu Arcade, that's on Sabo Road. There's another one at Mutimbingo Street, opposite Jibanji. And then the other one is located at Helselasi Avenue. Then the other three are outside CBD. One is at the Hub Mall in Current. The other one is at Vision Plaza on Mombasa Road. And then the last one is at Westlands on Parker Road. There are three simple rules when it comes to a drop of hubs. One is that you can only operate in one hub, okay? 
that one hub you you selected that's what every time you open a pet order that will always be dropping off your orders okay if you don't uh if you sorry if you want to relocate maybe i'm no longer comfortable kuenda kwa hub i would like to go to a different one just raise a claim so that the vendor support team can change your hub location number two working hours at the hub are currently eight to five that's on Mon between monday to friday and then on saturday they're open from 8 30 to 3. Then lastly, in case kunam to reota pa anoza large bulky items, the only hub that can receive large items uh, is the Mombasa Road uh, hub. Okay. Examples of large bulky items are if you're selling things like furniture, right, mattresses, generator, all those, right? Those are the that's what I mean by bulky items. In case you're selling such, um, the hub that can receive large items is the Mombasa Road hub. Okay. Okay, so let me quickly show you how to process an order. As I'm searching for one, if you have any question, you can go ahead and ask. In the meantime. Okay, so like I said, you will know you have an order either via email or on seller center. And on seller center, this is how it looks like. On the orders menu, you will see a red notification. So you click on orders, select manage orders. So these are those two orders I've been told I have. Let's process the second one. Always pay attention to this column. You see this column in Mandico pending since it will show you how long your order has been pending. Remember, don't let an order stay pending for more than how long? 24 hours. Okay. Yeah. So you come to the right hand side. The first step we said of processing an order is changing the status to ready to ship. So that's what we want to do. So we'll click on ready to ship here. Then this will pop up. So once this pops up, the simple thing to do is to remember is just let this blue tabs guide you. You will take four steps. So step one in Anambia, create package and next. Okay. Step two in Anambia, save serial numbers and next. Before I click on that, let me just say, in case Kunam Toyota Panosa Electronics, please make sure that you fill in the serial or the IMEI number of your product here before you move on. Make sure you fill in the correct number because you can't go back and edit. Number two, make sure that you fill it in before you move on because come on, repeat a step now, would you fill in the serial number? The system will have to fill it as zero and you can't, we can't go back and edit. We'll have to cancel that order and hope that the customer will be willing to place an order again. So this is only for electronic sellers. So if you're selling any form of electronic device, please make sure serial or IMEI numbers are filled in correctly. If you're not selling any form of electronic device, please leave that blank. Continue, save serial numbers and next. That was step number two. Step three, save invoice number, next, okay. Then the fourth and final step, Nihi, ready to ship. So I'll click on that. And I'm done. How do I know? You'll see this order is ready to be shipped. So I can, I can now close either here or here. I will put together. As you can see, I no longer have a pending. I'm just, sorry, I, the order process is no longer under pending. It's now moved to ready to ship. So that's where I'll move on to next. To proceed to the second step, which is printing the documents. So this is how those documents look like. So um, I'll come to the left-hand side for the order, right? So this order, I'll select it like this. Okay. So I select the order. Right, and then just click on go. That's it. So select the order you want to print documents for, then click on go. Alternatively, come up on orders Ningi, and you want to print documents for all of them at once. Select all of them. If you see, I've selected all two of them. Then I just click on go like that. Okay. Yeah. So let me just print for one. You see how documents look like. So I click on go, and this is how the documents look like. So these are the documents that you need to print. The most important ones that you need to print to save on paper. Let's print the last two. The last two being this one. You see this one that has somewhere to be signed. It's called the, the, the carrier manifest. And then the last one called the shipping label, right? These two, these last two are the most important ones, right? So make sure that you've printed these documents before going to the hub, right? The final statuses of your orders, like I said, remember order LQQ under ship, that means it's still in transit, either it's still awaiting collection or it's, or it's on its way to the customer's location. Completed is where you get to see all the statuses I was talking about earlier. All right? Yeah. Any question on this topic before we move on? Mm, I can see this. Mm. Do you have an app for this seller center that you can uh, put on your phone? 
we used to, but then it uh, we no longer have one. Um, the developers are trying to improve on it. So at the moment, no, there's no app. Um, uh, you have to manually log in every time. Yes, you can just save it on your browser to easily be able to access the seller center. Um, okay, how will, um, um, yes, I'll be sharing the presentation. Like I said, make sure that you filled in your details, your seller center shop name and your email address so that I can share this information with you. Where do I get the Jumia shop link? Good question. So if you ever want to get your Jumia shop link, very simple, come to your products page, manage products, okay? Once you're here, this is one way rather, click on any of your products. You know, if your product has a link, that means it's live, all right? So I'll click on that one. So when you click on any of your product, it will take you directly to the Jumia, to the Jumia website. And always pay attention to see if that's your shop name there, right? So you see, this is my shop name. I mean, I'm just giving an example. So I click on seller information, okay? Once I click on seller information, it takes me directly to my full shop. So this is the Angela shop, 55 products found, and this is the full list. So if I want to share my shop link, do I copper juice? You see now the, the shop link is up here, jumia.co.k forward slash your shop name. So that's how you can find your shop link. Do you need a Jumia ID for the hub drop-offs? How about when you use a rider to drop off your packages? You don't need your Jumia ID. When you're sending a rider, it's okay. Right? They can go ahead and drop off the orders for you. Uh, when you go to the hub, there's always a tablet. Most of the hubs have a tablet. You need to uh, uh, key in purpose of visit. So every visit that you make at every hub, you have to key in, in the tablet, what shop you're here representing, or are you coming to drop off or pick up an order? Uh, sorry, a, a return, right? So yeah, so every time anyone of yours or anyone you've sent to drop off an order on your behalf, they always have to key in your, that they came to the hub, okay? Um, how do you look for the shipping fees? I think I already talked about this, right? Um, do you remember? Where is my shop? For commission and fees, remember I said earlier, all of this is within your profile page. Uh, on your profile page, the link is here, commissions and fees. Just watch this video again, you'll see how we got there. Um, are there pickup options when fulfilling the orders? You only have one. Remember I told you only lock to one drop-off hub. Um, unless you have a different, um, uh, the question is different. What do you mean by pickup options, actually? If you can unmute your mic, you can ask Chip Kirui. Okay, Katin asks, I forgot my password when I enter, forgot password and enter the recovery email. I'm not getting recovery instruction that, that email. Just uh, forward your email and I'll have someone send you the, the link. Is there 24 hours until I mark ready to ship or until I deliver the hub, until you deliver the hub? Where do I share the details? Yeah, everyone should write their email addresses and their shop names on the messages here. Yeah. Okay, let me quickly move on to the next topic as time is running out. Finance, let's talk about money. Uh, very short topic, number one, payment methods. Remember I told you are two, M-Pesa or EFT. Please note for those who will choose M-Pesa, the maximum we send by M-Pesa is 150 Gs. Bank transfers take up to 48 hours to reflect. We get this question a lot, especially from new vendors. I know you're excited to get paid, but note, come on, let's go and talk through bank transfer. Know that if you're in two different banks, for example, us as Juma, we use ABSA to make payments. So, of course, if you're not in ABSA, you're in a different bank, payments take between one to two days to reflect on your bank account. So, be patient. So, come out to my on Wednesday, either to reflect on your account on Thursday or Friday. Number two, payment timelines. By default, we pay vendors on a weekly basis. Weekly Payments are done every Wednesday of every week. So, for example, now since tomorrow is a holiday, payments will be done. I don't know if they're being done today or they'll be done on Thursday, right? Yeah, but then payments by default are done on Wednesdays of every week, okay? But as a new vendor at the moment, you are not on weekly payments. During these first two months of your account, you will be paid monthly, where monthly payments are done on the eighth working day of the following month. Okay, once you complete your first two months, then you'll be your default weekly payment. 
okay? I need to emphasize you're only paid for delivered orders. A lot of times vendors call and ask, why is Jimmy only paying me for five orders yet? I only dropped off, let's say, I only I dropped off 10 orders that they have. One of them delivers in Guinea. One thing vendors fail to understand or forget is the different statuses of your orders. Remember I told you, if your order is marked as delivery failed, there's no payment. In fact, that item has come back. If your order is marked as canceled, that means that that transaction never even happened. If your order is marked as shipped, that means the order is still in transit. It's not yet reached the customer. So the only status you're left to be paid is delivered, okay? Then lastly, if you wish to be paid monthly in future, if maybe you'll not be comfortable being paid weekly, you can raise a claim and ask vendor support to be to put you on monthly payments. Okay, yeah. Now let's view your account statement. You can view your payments on Seller Center, and this is found on the reports menu here. Uh, select account statements like this. Okay, so when you select account statements like that, this is what you'll see. This is an example of an active account, let's say. On the top right-hand side, you'll see paid in the last three months. This is where you get to see how much you've earned or how much you've been paid in the last three months you've been selling. Then beside it, you get to see open statement. Open statement means the current statement that is going on. So for example, the current statement is this week. So, so far, this account this week, as of today, Tuesday, the made sales worth 2,000 bob. Then do and unpaid shows you if there's anything Jumia has not yet paid you for. And this is true because yet we've not paid vendors for last week's sales. Right? So yes, we still owe this vendor for last week's payment. Below that, we have the list of the weeks, or if you're paid monthly, the list of the months. For example, I click on that period. Any period you click on, it opens up on your right. Okay. Now, how do you interpret this statement? What do you need to know? How do you, should you understand your statement? Sales revenue shows you your gross meaning you sold goods worth this amount before Adrian came and deducted anything. Number two is fees. Fees is deduction, right? And remember the two types of deduction we said is commission and shipping cost contribution. Now, and the third and final point will be your net. That's your payout. This is how much I'm expecting. Now, from the total amount of money I sold, uh, I made, then Jimmy came and deducted the fees, what am I left with? That's what your net will be. Other things that you might find on your statement that might not appear often can be, one, other revenues. Other revenues is there to represent any form of reimbursement. Sometimes there are things that Jumia might lose or damage. If Jumia ever loses or damages your product, we take accountability, we will pay you back the cost of the damage or the cost of the products, sorry. Okay, so anything of yours that was lost or damaged by Jumia will pay you back the cost of the product. Your payment, here's the final under sales revenue because it's not a sold item, it's a reimbursement. So that will be done under other revenue. So if you ever see any amount reflecting under other revenues, you now know what it's, it's for. Under fees, not only will you see commission and shipping costs, you might see penalties. Remember I told you, your penalties are deducted in two occasions when you drop off the wrong thing at the half, where the penalty is a thousand bob. And number two, if you're found selling counterfeit products where the penalty is 20,000 shillings. So always make sure that you do the right thing to avoid being charged penalties. Otherwise, okay, on a penalty, it always appears here under fees. Other forms of fees that you might find is if you've used a service. For example, this vendor uses a service called Jume Express. It's a storage service, right? So fees can also show if there's any service that you've used on Jumia, because maybe something that I need to clarify is most of the services you're going to use as a vendor on Jumia, you will not pay for them cash upfront. The only services you're paying in form of cash, remember, is the Jumia production service, the one for content and buying packaging materials. The other forms of service payments are deducted from the sales you'll make at the end of that week from your seller center. Okay, now refund. When a customer returns a, a product, remember I told you they can ask for their money back and that's what we call a refund. How does a refund look like on your statement? Remember, your item or you are paid. So that's reflected as a payment on your statement. But now since the customer has come back uh, days later to return the product, see that money you are paid is being deducted from you because it's going back to the customer. Now, ile commission jumel ko may deduct to kiuza. Does jumel still keep the commission after the item is returned? No. Even us as jumel, we pay you back the commission we deducted. And that's what we call refund on fees. Basically, it's just the commission which was initially deducted that is also being paid back as well. Okay. So basically, a refund is the opposite of a normal transaction. Okay. Yeah. Then finally, we have others. 
if you use other services uh, like marketing. So others is that to represent deduction of services that involve marketing. A common marketing service that vendors are using is called market, uh, sorry, sponsored products. Right, as you can see, this spend is being deducted for a service called sponsor products. Right, yeah. So if you use any form of marketing service, most of the time the deduction is done under others. Right, but on the same note, others can can also represent payment, payment of a reward. We have two rewards. We have shipping reward did you know that if you ship your orders in less than 24 hours and you're able to do this for 90 percent of the orders you'll get that whole month we will pay you 20 shillings for each order that's one reward another reward is a vendor referral if you refer another vendor to come sell on jumia we will pay you uh five percent commission from whatever they make during their first one month so it's very simple Unana, when you're filling in the registration form there's a place it asks you referred by make sure that when this person is filling in the registration form they write your seller id nothing else please listen to me your seller id that's the only way you'll be able to claim your commission payment if you write your name it will not qualify how do we know who's who's mary who's maureen who's james who's kevin at kudri right so we don't know your details we can only identify you by your seller id okay also, they should not take your shop name as well. That will not qualify. Do you know how many people share the same shop name like you, right? So to make it more specific, to know the right person we're going to pay, your seller ID is what will only be valid if they write your seller ID when they're writing who referred them, okay? So that once you, they fill in the full registration form, it is recorded, all that is recorded in a, in a doc. So that by the end of the, that vendor's first one month, we come and review who is the person who referred this vendor. Now we come and pay your account, 5% of that as your commission. So the more vendors you refer, the more money you make as a referral, okay? Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to explain as rewards. Now that's how a full statement, What that's what a full statement is all about. And for those who are more in specific about details, you can download your statement. That's the good thing about it. So that it gives you a detailed view of each and every product that is being paid for, each and every product that is being deducted. Commission, deduction, shipping cost deduction for each and every item. And that's everything about payment. Quickly moving on to the last topic, let's talk about seller score and value added services. So seller score is what we touched on earlier on. If you remember when I was talking about uh, the introduction to seller center, I talked about this dashboard that I showed you here, right? And uh, there's this one, your rating, right? So every vendor on Jumia has a seller rating, right? Now let's talk about it. Your seller score is also called seller rating. And it is basically a measure of your operational performance. Every one of you will be measured on how you're performing operationally. This um, seller rating, what does it take into account? It is determined by three things. One, cancellation rate. Two, quality return rate. And three, average customer rating. Those are the three things that determine your seller score. Now, so far in, in the class, you know that. You remember I told you I'll keep emphasizing avoid canceling your orders because that is what determines your rating. So the lesser the times you cancel your orders, the better. If you can avoid canceling orders completely, that is even best. Quality and return rate means how many customers returned your product complaining about quality. Okay. Number three, average customer rating. How many stars did customers leave, or leave rather on your product? Right. Of course, five stars being the best. Right. Yeah. So these three things are what determine your overall seller score. Right. Now, your seller score is measured out of five. The best score you can get is five out of five. OK, if you're able to maintain zero percent cancellation, zero percent quality return rate and five stars average customer rating to get the perfect score of five out of five. Your seller score is refreshed every Monday. So you don't have one seller score forever for life, no. Your seller score keeps changing every week on Monday, right? Because you're still getting orders. You still have to be reviewed based on your performance every week. And then lastly, as a new vendor on Jumia, during this first 30 days of your account, how on a seller score, because there's no selling activity taking place, the first seller score you'll all pick will be 3.5, okay? After your one month is over, okay? Yeah, now, 
why is this seller's cost such a big deal for you as a vendor? One, because it affects your area, different areas of your life as a vendor on Dreamer. One of them being participation in promotions. Like I said, Dream, uh, Black Friday is a very big deal. And trust me, a lot of vendors are preparing anything so far as we've opened the 60 sellers have already joined 87 in this one, right? 20, 227 in this one. So promotions are usually a big deal, especially if you've been in Dreamer for a long time, you'll see how it will benefit your business. So when you see a promotion come up, you'll see how a lot of vendors jump onto joining promotions and Black Friday, especially being the cream de la cream of all our promotions, because it's the biggest campaign we have of the year and it attracts the highest number of customers on Dreamer. Right now, can you imagine you want to join Black Friday, but you can't join because your seller score is bad. For example, if I would want to join the Black Friday, high, I'm selling hi-fi systems. I've been told the minimum seller score I should get is 3.0. So can you imagine I have seller score, a seller score below 3.0? I can't join. You're disqualified. So that's one area of your life your seller score will affect, participation in promotion. Number two, accessing loans. Did you know we have a loan service? exclusive to Jumia sellers it's this one you see this logo just click on it you'll go see the whole website we offer loans to sellers of course just like any company that gives out loans they always do background check now here one of the background check they look at of course is your sales um, and also they look at your seller score performance in the last six months how have you been performing right so yeah so of course if your seller score has not been impressive it will it will affect the decision of whether you qualify for a loan or not or how much money you will qualify for in your loan then lastly customer traffic let me show you how competition looks like a simple example of how competition looks like in case maybe you um do not see this i always like using this flash disk because it's what i find faster and easier so let me just use it so this is an example it's just an example of how how it looks like when a lot of vendors are selling the same thing. So this, let me use this one. This flash disk is sold by 11 different vendors. So it's the HP 64 GB silver. It's going for 759. Using the number of ratings it has, it has 943 ratings. And then keep in mind, take all customers when you're in Mwanga and item on a, they come back and leave a rating. So trust me, it's got way more orders than this, right? It's going for 759 because the person selling it is called Riken. And Riken has a seller score of 80%. The reason why they have a seller score of 80% is because they, the fulfillment rate is good. Everything is good, right? Now, this is how it looks like to the customer. So customers also see your seller score, by the way, in case you didn't know. So you might think you're performing badly and you're like, ah, no one can see it, it's just me. No. Customers can see your seller score. Even your fellow competitors or fellow vendors can see your seller score like this. Now, the other people selling the, the same flash disk. You see, it's saying 10 other offers. So we click on see more offers. We click on see all offers. Now, these are all the vendors selling this flash disk, right? The second best seller is Liti Solution, and they're selling it for 775. And they have a seller score of 94%. Denfa, 778, 40%. And again, Liti, I think they posted it twice, right? Alubaba and are you seeing? The lower you go down the list, the more expensive with the worst rating. Are you seeing, right? So that's how it looks like. So this is how you look like pinned against your competitors. So if you find that you, you, you put Ukuchini with the most expensive price and the worst seller score, right? Do you think you have a chance of selling this item? Of course not, right? So this is how competition looks like on Rumia. One product being sold by different people. Like I said, chances are you are selling the same product with like 10 or 20 or 30 other vendors, right? Now, how do you keep up with the competition? Of course, good price with a good seller score. They must be together, right? So that's one area your seller score affects. Lastly, how do you protect your seller score? Three simple things that I need to emphasize. I've, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. Avoid canceling your orders. Please let this be something that you remember as you start your journey on Jumia. You need to remember to update your stock daily, especially if Jumia is not the only place you're, you're selling your products, okay? So that you avoid canceling your orders. Number two, Jumia cancellation will affect your seller score because of you being late in processing your orders. So once again, another thing you need to remember is up, process your orders on time to avoid cancellation because of lateness. Number two, source your products from genuine suppliers. Do your research, learn from other vendors where they're getting their products from so that you avoid getting returns because of bad quality items. 
then the last thing is make sure you ship the right thing at the hub. Okay? Always ship the right thing at the drop of hub. Yeah, and that's what you need to know about your seller score. Last thing I want to say is the value added services we have for you are as follows. We have a service called Jumia Express. This is where you can store your items at our warehouse. If you will ever want to use the service, you can learn more about it on this link. I'll share with you all the status, don't worry. So this is where basically you store your items at our warehouse. Then every time we a part order, since we're those who have your products, this is in the process orders for you, okay? Then we have another service called Jumia Logistics. We are offering our logistics services to you even for the orders you get outside Jumia. Maybe if you have your own website, if you have your Facebook or what Instagram page, now you really want to process orders uh, what customers are called outside Nairobi, maybe or go for Bali, like Western or Coast or whatever, and you don't have that capacity to deliver these items to them, you can actually um, use our services. We are offering our services even to people outside, outside Jumia, vendors outside Jumia. We have another service called Sponsor Products. This is where you can pay to have your item boosted to the top of the page so that it gets more visibility. Of course, the more visibility, the more chances of selling, right? And then lastly, we have Market Insights. This is where you can pay to learn of Jumia's top selling items. Do you want to know uh, the items that are doing well on Jumia? And uh, yeah, we can share with you that information. It just comes at a small cost of a, a minimum of 800 shillings, depending on the category or the, the amount of data you would want, right? So yeah, and then of course there's Jumia Lending that I said earlier, you can get loans. So I'll make it easy. If you ever want to access or learn about a service, you see all these links I was talking about up here. For example, if you want to learn more about this Jumia Logistics, do a link. If you want to learn about Market Insights, Newsfeed, Boost Your Products is where you can learn about sponsored products, right? So all this link you see, remember I told you they either lead you to informational services. And then the official website we have for vendors is this one called Jumia Vendor Hub. This is now where everything from training videos to all those services I was talking about, any information. If you want to learn about how to join a promotion, right? If you want to learn about um, further details about the penalties, if you want to learn about details about the services that I've mentioned, everything is on this website. It's called Vendor Hub. And this is the link in case you saw you forgot you didn't see it. This one, Jumia Vendor Hub, right? So all the details are here. Everything that you'll ever want to know as a vendor, everything is here, right? Even testimonials from other vendors, people who've succeeded, you get to learn about it, right? Upcoming news as well, right? Learn about Mercy. I always like talking about Mercy, right? She, how she left, uh, she, she, as in like she joined Jumia, right? There's so many other people as well. So this is basically the best avenue to, to get more details and that information. So all those services I've said, you can find them all here even with their prices. So you'll be able to see their rate cards and their prices, okay? Yeah, our official communication channel is that Razor Claim, as I kept saying, this one, Razor Claim. We don't have a call center for vendors. All communication is done through raising a claim, okay? So if you have any question or query, raise a claim. Uh, their average response time is in less than 12 hours. If there's something urgent, they always give you a call after you raise a claim to sort out the problem, okay? Yeah. Final questions, please unmute your mic and ask away so that we can wind up the session. Or oh, someone is asking me, does Jumia Express apply for even large products? No, it doesn't. We don't have capacity to accommodate large items like furniture. Um, do you offer pickup services? No, we do not. We no longer offer pickup services. When will the dormant accounts be activated? If your account has been deactivated, as soon as you do the test. Do the test, then um, raise a claim. I hope you can be able to access the raise a claim form. Raise a claim and tell the vendor support team you've already attended training. I hope you've left me your details. So what they do is they'll go to my records, they see you've attended class, they'll see you've done the test and you've passed. Then they'll send you a form where you need to fill in and say, uh, what are your next steps? What do you? What will you be? Do? What are your action? What is your action plan to prevent your account from being deactivated again? Okay, yeah. So fill in the form, then they'll reactivate your account. Um, what email are you talking about? 
Oh yeah, I have not yet forwarded your request. I'll have someone work on your request, Catherine. So you're saying you want to, you want to, you forgot your password. I'll have someone reach out. I'll have someone send you the link. Okay, so storage fees for Juma Express is per month. Just go check out the services. Like I said, just go click on Juma Express. You'll see all the costs and details about it on the website. So allow me to end the session here. I'll be sharing with you the email with the, the recording and the material from the class. Um, I'm really glad that it has been helpful for you. Thank you, Emily. So have yourselves a lovely afternoon and uh, happy selling on Juma. Okay. So yeah, I'll be sharing my, I'll be sending the, the recording later on this afternoon. You're free to leave the call. <laughs>